if there's an underlying meaning behind what you're saying. Are y'all with me? So if he's preaching that this morning, is somebody on your nerves? Is something going on? Who are you talking about? Well, I would go out before I even start and say, I'm talking about nobody. And, and to say that I was just talking about somebody in here would be saying that my experiences in life are only limited to the five or six years that I've known most of the people in here. Uh, most of the things that we preach are a result of uh, time and experience and studying and the things that you see. And so I can put that on there because we're going to talk about some stuff here that I know uh, there's always somebody who's thinking, what are you talking about? And when you do that, you're missing the point. Uh, you're missing what God may have for you. Number one, and then you're missing the point uh, that, 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 that there is not necessarily always a reason behind what we're saying. Now, uh, this morning I want to talk about, and as I looked at this, you often find within the church and within Christians, uh, we have a problem. There's, there's a problem going on, church. Uh, not necessarily just here, but everywhere. There's a problem going on within the church, uh, and that problem is uh, criticism. Uh, and it's not just in the church, it's everywhere you go. And this morning, I want to look at the critics of Jesus. Uh, because the more I study the scripture, this lesson begins to put together over time. Because as I'm studying different things, I begin to notice something that, uh, not, uh, and not, not just the fact that Jesus got to the cross, uh, but the opposition in which he faced before he got to the cross. Uh, it was large, it was great. Uh, it, it, it came at it in all different types of directions. And so this morning, I want to look a little bit at criticism. Raise your hand here today if you've ever been criticized at any point in your life. <laughs> Raise your hand if you've been criticized at any point this last week. <laughs> yeah, we all have to. <laughs> I saw two hands up over there. Uh, we all have to deal with critics. There's not a person here today that will not have to deal with criticism in their lives. Now, the word criticism comes from the word critique, uh, which means uh, skill in judging, which means uh, to uh, have an observation, but not only have an observation, most of us have observations. But the difference between a critic and the rest of us is that a critic usually has to comment on their observations. Now, it also means to review or to analyze, and then I want to go out and say before I begin this morning, not all criticism is bad. See, sometimes you've got to criticize things or analyze things in order for them to become better. Tiger Woods became the best in the world because he had some critical analysis on his shot. In other words, someone looked at his shot and told him the adjustments that he needed to make. Magic Johnson became one of the greatest basketball players of all time because someone criticized his game. Someone critiqued his game to help him work on the things that he had to work on.
to take the good and you got to leave the bad. There's an old proverb, uh, pro proverb that says, if one person calls you a donkey, don't listen to it. If five people call you a donkey, you need to get fitted for a sack. <laughs> and sometimes if you hear it over and over and over, If you don't want criticism, be nothing, say nothing, and do nothing. And nobody will have anything to say. Nobody will have anything to analyze. Nobody will have anything to scrutinize about. But if you want to step out, if you want to be like Jesus and shake up the norms of society, you've got to be prepared for the guns that are going to be pointed in your direction. You've got to be prepared for the bullets that are going to come. I know you drove it up and you washed it and it's clean. 
it. Everybody's not happy for it. You're happy about it. And I've learned that you got some, you know, like, I don't even show them a lot. Because they'll smile about it, but they ain't really, they ain't really happy for it. About it. They're not, it's not as happy. I got a new house. Don't tell nobody, because they don't, they're not happy. They're going to figure out how you got the new house. I got a new job. They're not happy for you that you get a pay raise. Hey, I'm sorry.
And at the expense of the letter, we forget the spirit behind the letter. Sometimes, even when we are right, we become wrong. Because we say the right things, but we don't say it in the right spirit. And sometimes, by saying things, you got to know when to say things. Sometimes things about timing. You know, when somebody loses something, they don't want to hear that they lost the same. You lost the same day. Put it in 
in context. And so when you study the word of God, you got to put it in context of the author. When it was written, to whom it was written, you can't just take a verse and extract the meaning. I told you before, this is the day the Lord has made. We should rejoice and be glad in it. Many of us can quote that if I woke up this morning. This is the day. But if you look at that, that's prophecy. That the day is when Christ Jesus would come to take away the sins of the world. There are a lot of scriptures in which we over, we would misunderstand. And I believe uh, the same situation you're going to see here occur this morning. Go to John chapter 8. Y'all with me? Now you don't have to go there. I can just tell you what it says. John chapter 8, there was a woman called the first. And you have, you have different types of, of criticism. I'm going to try to categorize these and put these in the same one. First one, you have an institution. You have institutional criticism. In other words, this is the way that we've always done it. And if we're, if we're not careful as a church, not only as a church of Christ, but as each individual location, you, you can fall in that same way. In other words, you can go around the city and you go to church and say, this is not how we do it here. And the way they do it is just the way they do it. It may not be anything unscriptural with the way you do it. But because it's, it's different from what they do it, then they feel like you're wrong because you don't do it the way that they do it. They say, we don't do that here. And so we criticize every other church that doesn't do it like we do. I don't one thing I do not give a half about with preachers and other people is talking about other churches. Are y'all with me? And you get stuck in that. Y'all know what they're doing over there? Yeah. No, I don't know. God can tell they're doing over there. And all we're not even addressing it if it was something that, that pertained to a salvation issue. Some doctrine issue. But, but, but whether or not they did the communion after the service, I ain't got time to deal with that. Whether they had one song leader or four.
adultery uh, cast the first stone, there probably could have been somebody among the crowd that could have stood there. But when he left the play, he said, he who is without sin. Yes, so though you may not have done what you, the, the person has done that you're criticizing, you've done something. As my grandmother said, that sometimes you ought to go somewhere and sit down.